Hi, this is Matt Slay. In this video, I'll show you my new Dynamic Forms project on VFPX. Dynamic Forms is a way for you to define a form layout like this using a markup syntax similar to HTML or XAML uh, rather than using the FoxPro form designer that we've had for uh, many years in FoxPro. So, um, here's a sample form that's generated, and this is, a, this is on the VFPX site. This is a form that was rendered all from markup um, syntax, and I'll show you the syntax if you scroll down. This is the field definitions that you saw displayed in that form, along with some of the um, attributes that they're called that apply styling and positioning um, to the form controls when they're rendered on the form. So I'm going to open up this first demo project and show you the simplest way to get started with dynamic forms. The simplest case is to bind dynamic forms directly to a cursor and have it display all fields from that table in a dynamically rendered way. So this code creates an instance of the dynamic form. Uh, we've opened a table, create an instance of the form. We'll set a caption and a heading on the form, which are properties you can learn more about on the documentation. The main work happens here where we assign the C alias property equal to this table that we just opened above. And I'm going to go ahead and set a form height of 400 because I know that's how big I want this one to render. And then we'll call show on the form. So here we have every field that's, dis that's um, in that table definition displayed with the field name automatically added as a label and a text field for numeric and text and it will even render a checkbox with the field name for boolean values and there's a save and a cancel button which will apply any changes directly to the cursor underneath if you're using table buffering or other validation that you may need to use you can deal with that when the form is closed and we know that most times we would never show all fields from a table to a user so the markup syntax really comes into play when we want to specify exactly which fields we'd like to show in our form. So here the setup for the form is exactly the same. We'll have an instance of the dynamic form class. We're going to have our first look at the markup syntax where we'll set a string where we're going to identify these four fields that we'd like displayed on the form. Then we'll call the show event and this time we see those specific fields displayed in the form along with the save and cancel buttons allowing the user to make changes and then push those changes back to the table. Now when we see this form displayed you'll notice that automatically we have a header area and then we have our body of our form which is the fields that we specified in our markup syntax and then at the bottom we have what we call the footer area where we have automatically embedded into the form a save and a cancel button and those areas are injected into the form class uh, during the rendering time of the form. So this is the header, this is the footer, and then the markup syn syntax that you supplied is rendered in the center here. On the render engine class, the markup for the layout of the header area and the footer area um, can be controlled so uh, you can create any kind of layout uh, items that you would like. Uh, if you don't want to include these items in your form layout at all, you can set those properties equal to empty strings and you would get a form that has no footer area and no header area. In this next demo, I'm going to explore some other options that are available through the markup syntax. In the previous example, we simply listed our four fields out. Each field is separated by a delimiter character. If you're going to add additional attributes to control the styling and the layout, I have found that it's better to switch over to this text and in text block and store that into a local variable. So I'm going to comment, uh, comment this previous block, and now we'll go this way with the text and in text. Now we're going to run the same form again, but now notice this is a memo field, and maybe we would love to have an edit box uh, displayed here. So one of the things we can do is to actually specify specific Fox Pro classes to use is in rendering these controls. This is where we will use the exact um, property names that we would use in Fox Pro, and these will be applied to uh, these controls as they are rendered onto the form. You can also use any custom classes that you would normally use on your forms in the form designer. Now, so this time we're going to call for an edit box, and I'm also going, ahead, going to go ahead and specify that we would have a width of 500 and a height of 
200. So if we save that and run the form, you'll see that now that control has been rendered as an edit box exactly like the markup that we specified. Um, you can do additional things with the markup. Let's say that we want to go ahead and include um, maybe that primary key field, which is called IP key. But let's say we want to display it, but we don't want to allow the user to edit that. So we can uh, indicate that we're going to display that field, but have its enabled property set to false. And now you'll see that it is in place at the top of the rendered form, but the field is disabled. Another thing that's uh, maybe common to want to do is to override the labels that are used. Uh, these labels come straight from the field names in the table. So we can go in and put something like um, caption equals to you know key value. I don't know how you might actually display it on your form, but it's just an example to show you how you can change the labels that are used for each of the fields that are put there. Another thing that we can do is, uh, if you notice, if we stretch this form around, we're uh, not really getting a resizing edit box, which is maybe a nice feature to use. So we can also come down on this edit box that we had used earlier and add the Fox Pro anchor property. We're going to use it as an attribute here, but each of these attributes maps to an exact Fox Pro property. And now you'll see that um, the edit box will uh, resize along with the stretching of the form. In this next demo, we'll explore, continue to explore some things about the markup syntax. Uh, one of the things that we want to do this time is to turn on a feature that could be kind of handy, which allows you to put the labels placed above the fields on the form. So I'm going to paste in this block of code. There's a property on the render engine which allows you to indicate that you want the labels located above each of the input controls. Different people just have a different preference for how those might be rendered on the form. Another thing I want to do in this demo is to line these next to these uh, PO number and shipping date fields. I want to put those all on a horizontal row so that my form is not so vertically stretched out. So one of the other attributes we can use is a kind of a custom one. This does not map to a specific Fox Pro property. So this is part of the markup syntax that is uh, some special um, markup that will indicate that we want these to be rendered on the same row as the previous control. So the attribute name is called row increment equals zero. So essentially we're telling the rendering engine that we want these next two fields rendered on the same row as the previous one. So now when we run it, you'll see that we've essentially created a row of controls across there. And when we have omitted that attribute from the, the next ship info uh, edit box class, then it will uh, move down to the next row and continue the flow from there.